This is Rupa Prasad, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Applications, MITS College. So today we are going to discuss about principles of public key crypto, uh, crypto system under the series of CNS. So first we will see what are the contents that we are going to discuss today. So today we are going to discuss about the symmetric key or asymmetric key cryptography. That is, we are going to find out the differences between the two types of cryptographic systems. Then we are we are going to talk about the principles of public key crypto system. In that we are going to discuss about the important facts of the uh, public key crypto system. And then we go for the plain text and ciphertext, how it will be in the public key cryptography. Then we talk about the encryption and decryption process. Then we discuss about the, the function that is a tab to one way function. Okay. First, coming to this one, all, as already we have discussed that these cryptographic algorithms are of two types. One we call it as a symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key cryptography. These are two types. This symmetric is also called as private key and asymmetric is also called as public key cryptography. Okay, so in symmetric what happens, the secret must be shared between the two persons. That means in the symmetric key cryptography, uh, only one key is used for encryption as well as a decryption. That means the same key is used for encryption process as well as the decryption process. So this key must be shared between the two persons only. That means whoever want to communicate between those them uh, those only we must have this private key or we can call it this secret key. Whereas in asymmetric key cryptography the secret is personal. That is the private key is personal which is not shared with anyone. But um, uh, him, each person creates and keeps his own her, uh, own or her own secret. That means every entity, that means every system is going to have a pair of keys. One we call it as a private key and one we call it as a public key. Okay, this public key is announced to everyone whereas the private key is kept a secret. That private key is not announced to everyone. So that is our main difference. That is the difference between the symmetric as well as asymmetric. One of the difference between symmetric and asymmetric. And while coming to the another difference, the symmetric key cryptography is based on substitution permutation. As we have seen in earlier sessions that uh, private key encryption, that is symmetric key cryptography, is mainly based on the substitution and permutation. So these are the only two building blocks which we are going to use in the symmetric key algorithms. So that we call it as a substitution and the one is called as a permutation. So they are going to substitute and permutate, uh, permutate the symbols. That means symbols, we can call it as a characters or bits. But whereas this asymmetric works on applying fun mathematical function to numbers. This asymmetric key cryptography works for numbers by applying the mathematical function. That is one more difference between the symmetric as well as asymmetric. Then coming to the another difference, in symmetric, cryptography the plain text and cipher text are thought as a combination of symbols we already discussed that here we are going to apply the say, um, that is uh, what we substitution and permutation on the symbols that means we are going to uh, view this plain text and as well as the cipher text as a combination of symbols that is a combination of characters and this uh, we are going to apply we are going to apply encryption decryption on the symbols only by permutating or substituting or we can perform both both. In some algorithms, we are going to perform both permutation as well as the substitution. Whereas in asymmetric cryptography, the plain text and cipher text are uh, treated as numbers. They are going to consider the plain text and cipher text as numbers, and we are going to use the mathematical functions, uh, to these functions, to convert into the other functions. That is, plain text is treated as of numbers. So these numbers, upon these numbers, we are using the mathematical functions so that these numbers are converted into other numbers, transformed into other numbers. That is nothing but the cipher text. And then coming to this, the principles of public key crypto system. We can call it a public key crypto system or we can call it a symmetric key cryptography. Okay. So, in public key or we can call it as asymmetric, sorry, asymmetric. So, this asymmetric key cryptography uses, as we have all earlier said, this cryptography uses a pair of keys, pair of keys, two separate keys are used. One we call it as a private key and one we call it as a public key private key and public key. So, see this diagram. So, what happens here? It is a convention to call the sender as alias and uh, call the receiver as a verb. 
you can call this uh, sender as alias and receiver as Bob. It is a convention. Okay. So what the what the communication is between the alias and the Bob? So alias wants to send the message to Bob. So by using this asymmetric cryptography, what uh, the alias is going to do means the alias is going to encrypt the message by using the Bob's public key. That is the receiver's public key. So, this message can be decrypted by using the receiver's private key only. That, that what we said. By using the pair of keys only, we can able to encrypt and decrypt. If we encrypt by using one key, with the opposite key, with the corresponding opposite key only, we have to open the message. So, when we consider it as a locking and unlocking, locking will be done by using the receiver's public key and unlocking is done by using the receiver's private key. And... There are the three important facts that we have to discuss. One we call it as a first one. First we will discuss this one. Okay. So security. Security. Who has to provide the security? That depends on the receiver. Okay. Receiver has to take care of the security. That means the, because the message will be encrypted by using the receiver's public key only. Okay. For that purpose, the receiver has a more, more consideration for um, security. So, here Bob is a receiver. So, Bob uses a key generation procedure in order to generate a pair of keys. He is going to generate a pair of keys. One we call it as a private key and one we call it as a public key. Okay. This private key is kept with Bob only but this public key will be announced to everyone by using the public key distribution channel. By using some public key distribution channel that we will discuss in later sessions. So by using this channel the Bob is going to distribute his public key to the public. Okay. That key will be taken by Alice because Alice want to send the message to Bob. Okay, so Alice is going to take the uh, public key of Bob and he is going to encrypt the message so that the plain text will be converted into cipher text and that this cipher text will be transformed, transmitted, sorry, transmitted through the insecure channel. The channel may be insecure or secure. So whenever it reaches the destination, the cipher text, that will be decrypted by using the private key of the receiver. Why? Because it is encrypted by using the public key of the receiver, it has to be decrypted by using the private key of the receiver. So then the receiver gets the plain text. That is a flow. How, how we are going to transmit the data. That is one of the facts that we have to understand in the public key crypto system. And coming to the next one. So here... So, here Alice and Bob cannot use the same set of uh, keys for two-way communication. That means what? If Bob wants to send the message to Alice, then Bob has to take the private key of Alice, then only he can able to encrypt. So, what I want to conclude is, so whenever one A, for sender wants to send a message to the receiver, he has to encrypt the message by using the receiver's public key only. Okay, so that the receiver can be able to open the message by using its private key. That's what it said. So, Bob and Alice cannot use the same set of keys for two-way communication. So, each entity in the community, each entity in the network should create its own private key and public keys. So, every entity, every system has to create a pair of keys. One we call it as a private key and one we call it as a public key. Private key is kept with itself and public key is announced to everyone. Okay, so that is a uh, that is a thing we have to follow in the public key crypto system, and this here. So in asymmetric key cryptography, Bob needs that is receiver needs only one private key to receive all the correspondence from everyone in the community. But Aries needs n public keys. Why? Because those uh, sender requires a public key of the receiver. So whomever you want to send, he requires a public key. Using that public key he only, he is going to encrypt and that message can be decrypted by using the private key. So, Bob can receive message from anyone. Okay. That can be opened by using its own private key. So, Bob requires only one key. But if Alice want to send the message to different people, then he requires the different people's public key. That is different systems public key. Suppose if Alice want to send a message to C, then he requires a C's public key. So, by using that key only, he is going to encrypt. So, Alice needs ring of public keys, whereas Bob needs only one private key. That we need to consider here. Okay. Then coming to, uh, we talk about the plain text and cipher text in the public key crypto system. So, in the compass, asymmetric key cryptography, the plain text and cipher text are treated as integers. This is important. 
okay so in symmetric cryptography what happens the plain text and cipher text are treated as symbols whereas then asymmetric we are treating as integers the message must be encoded as an integer before encryption and the integer must be decoded into message after decryption so the he, here the sender is having the message first the message will be encoded as integer Okay, before encryption, before applying encryption, it must be encoded as integer. On this numbers only, we are going to apply the encryption algorithm. And at the receiver side, what happens? The integer will come. That must be decoded into message after decryption. After message, after decryption, the mess the cipher text will be converted into integer. That must be decoded into message. Okay, that is an important thing. So here the plain text in asymmetric key cryptography, the plain text and cipher text are treated as integers, but whereas in symmetric they are treated as symbols. So it is a uh, normally, uh, for example, in other words, what you can say. Uh, so, uh, in other words, asymmetric key cryptography normally used for ancillary goals instead of message encryption. So these uh, goals are very important. Uh, that I will tell you later. Next slide. Okay, and next we talk about the encryption and decryption process in public key encryption system. So encryption, decryption, asymmetric cryptography are mathematical functions as we have already discussed. So here the plain text and cipher text is treated as numbers and the encryption, decryption algorithms are the mathematical functions which are applied over the numbers. Okay, so the cipher text can be thought as the notation can be given like this. How we get the cipher text by applying the function on the plain text by using the public key. By using the public key, we are going to apply the function. This is notation how you have to represent. So C is a cipher text and P is a plain text. So how we get the cipher text, how the encryption process is done means how, how we get the cipher text. Cipher text is uh, we obtain the cipher text by performing a function on the plain text by using the public key, by using the public key. So, and how we are going to decrypt, how we are going to get the plain text means by applying the decryption algorithm, by applying the decryption function on the cipher text by using the private key. That's what you have to consider. And this function, what is this function? This function should be a trapdoor one-way function that we will discuss what we have to, what is this trapdoor one-way function? So this function should be trapped or one way function so that the only the receiver can be able to decrypt but not any other. Like that we are ensuring the integrity also. And um, so and this one, so already we discussed. So for the uh, en encipherment of larger messages, symmetric will be used. Okay. So for the encrypting the small messages or by using the key shared. Uh, so what happens in symmetric key cryptography? We have to share a secret key between the sender and the receiver. That key will be encrypted by using the asymmetric. Okay. So asymmetric key is or symmetric key cryptography is used as well as with the symmetric key cryptography. Most popularly where we are going to use means in symmetric key cryptography what happens before uh, before transmitting the messages. The sender and receiver has to share the secret key and this secret key can be shared by using the asymmetric key cryptography. That is the main thing. Okay. And um, Coming to this next one, uh, uh, what we have said, trapdoor function. So what is this trapdoor function means trapdoor one-way function. Here, the functions that we are going to use in this uh, uh, public key crypto systems are trapdoor one-way function. So what is this trapdoor one-way function means? So uh, what first we discuss one by one. First we discuss our function. So what is a function? Function means it is a rule that associate one element in a set A called the domain to another element in the set B called range. Okay. So this is a set uh, domain uh, set A and this is the range called as B. So a function is a is a rule that maps one element in the set to the other element in the another set. That we call it as a function. And we have an invertible function. Invertible function means is a function that associates each element in the range with exactly one element in the domain, one to one. That we call it as an invertible function. Coming to this one-way function, what is this one-way function? A one-way function is a function 
that satisfies two properties. What are the two properties? Yes, that is function is easy to compute. Function is very easy to compute. That is we, given x. If x is given, we can able to find out y. y equal to f of x. Okay, so f is very easy to compute. If x is given, we can able to compute the function. That is y equal to f of x. But if if f inverse is difficult to compute f inverse is difficult to compute that means if we have a y okay y if y is given we cannot able to calculate x we cannot able to calculate x that we call it as a one way function okay we can able to calculate the function but by using the y we cannot able to calculate x okay we can calculate y by using x but we cannot calculate y by use uh, we cannot calculate x by using y okay that we call it as a one way function and this trapped or one way function means it is having one more property that is given y okay if y is given and trapped or secret is given then x can be easily computed what we have said if y is given then we cannot able to, even y is given we cannot able to compute it is infeasible to compute x but what this trapped or one way function says means if y is given and secret is given and trapped or that is called as a secret then x can be computed easily that we call it as a trapped or one way function and uh, this encryption process encryption and decryption functions are going to implement this trapped or one way function in the public key crypto system okay those are the principles of the public key crypto system and these are the references uh, which i used to make these slides and if you have any queries, you can um, uh, say, uh, uh, you can uh, post your query here. Hope you understand. Thank you.